What's up guys, welcome back to another video. In today's episode, we're gonna be installing lowering springs and spacers on my 8.6. Now going over the springs, these are Skunk 2 lowering springs. They're gonna lower the car 1.4 inches in the front and 1.6 inches in the rear. And these are the FT86 Speed Factory spacers. It's just gonna keep the 5x100 wheel adapter. It's not gonna change anything. It's actually meant to be used on the stock wheels. So we're gonna do 25 millimeters in the rear and 20 millimeters in the front. So just as a quick overview, you'll notice the springs actually have this nice red coating on them to protect against any abrasions you might have when you're driving. And then going over the spacers, we're going to notice that they actually come nicely packaged so they're not damaged during shipping. These are actually forged aluminum spacers and the way they work is you're actually going to bolt the spacer to the stock studs and then you're going to bolt the wheels to the spacer. It's very safe, it's hub centric so you shouldn't have any issues with wheel wobble and it's just going to widen the look of the car. So these springs are actually going to install onto your stock struts just like the normal OEM springs. The only difference is now they're red and they're going to be slightly lower. So when you're installing them you actually want to use spring compressors. What these are going to do, just like the name, they're going to compress the spring. It's going to make sure that when you're installing the springs that the strut doesn't explode on you since there's so much tension in the springs. And then you're gonna to wanna to torque your wheel spacers down to the car at 89 foot pounds. This is the OEM setting. And then you're gonna to also torque down the wheel to the spacer at 89 foot pounds. And these are actually pretty safe because they're made out of forged aluminum and there's a hub centric ring here. So what this is gonna do is when you mount the spacer onto the car, it's gonna be perfectly aligned and there's gonna be no issues with it. So you won't have any wobble when you're driving the car. Let's go ahead and toss these on the car and see how it looks. So we're going to go ahead and start putting the parts on and I'm going to show you guys how we did it. So if you tear apart the trunk and remove the carpet, you'll be revealed with these two nuts. So what these two nuts do is hold the top hats of the strut in. And then I also have the car jacked up and we've taken off the wheels. So what we're going to do now is get under the car and if you look at the control arm, you can see there's these three nuts and these nuts are actually attached to bolts. So what you have to do is remove the nuts and then pull the bolts out. This is going to free up the bottom of the car and then also since you remove the two nuts from the top, you can actually just go ahead and pull down on it and then reach the coilover out of the car. So the cool thing about the stock strut is that it's a coilover system, just non-adjustable. So it still works as a coilover, meaning it's a coil spring over a strut, hence the term coil over. So it's just non-adjustable, but it's going to perform like a coilover, which is the cool, pretty cool thing about this car is that since it does come with this type of strut from the factory. So once you've pulled out the stock strut, you'll actually see that there is a nut on the top and that's what's holding it all together. So this single nut is holding the top hat to the strut. You'll want to put it on some clamps to prevent the spring from exploding. So we're going to go ahead and remove it by just using an Allen key and then putting it into the socket and then just threading it out. And then once you do that, just go ahead and put the new spring on and then do the same thing you did to pull it apart. So then now we can go ahead and put the wheels back on and just pretty much do the same thing you did to put it back together. So now we're gonna start working on the front of the car. It's not too much different than the rear. We're gonna do the same exact thing by jacking up the car and then removing the wheels. And now when you look into the wheel well, you'll see that there's actually a few brake lines and nuts that you'll have to remove, but overall it's still similar to the rear. So on top you'll have three, three nuts for the top hat and then you can also see your brake lines and links that you'll have to remove as well. So you'll have to remove this link as well as two bolts and then on the top hat you'll have your three nuts. So go ahead and remove those and then you should be able to just pull out the strut. And then do the same exact thing as you did for the rear to install the springs and then go ahead and put it all back together on the car the same way you took it apart. So once you're all done just go ahead and put the car back together and then drop it and then go ahead and take it to get it aligned. Because when you lower the car it messes with the adjustments so you need to go ahead and get it aligned to fix your toe, caster, and camber. So once I get it aligned I'm going to go ahead and take it outside to see how it looks. So I have the car behind me and I'm super happy with how it turned out because it really gives the car that OEM plus feeling. So the cool thing about lowering the car and then adding spacers to it is even though it's on the stock fenders, it makes the fenders look a lot wider without actually doing anything to them. So keep in mind, these are just the stock fenders, but because of the spacers, it makes the car look wider. It's a pretty cool trick on your mind. So you can see that the stock wheels are now I wouldn't say flush, but pretty close to it with the fender. And I think it just gives it that OEM plus feel. So you can see the car, it's definitely not like too, too low, but it's definitely noticeable how low it is. Now, if you didn't know better, you probably would think it's just on stock height because of the stock wheels, but I think it really makes the car look a, a lot better considering it was just for $200. So let me know what you guys think. We'll definitely be doing a lot more stuff just like this. So comment down below what you want to see next on the car. But for now, we'll see you in the next one. 